Hi guys, my name is Karthik and I am from executeautomation.com and welcome to our next tidbits in our automation framework development with Selenium Java course. And today we'll be talking about Java 10 local variable type inference. Before watching this part, I would request you to watch the previous videos of this particular course since this video is going to talk exclusively just the local variable type inference, not the other area of the course. Alright, so let's get started. Java 10 is the fastest release of Java version in its 23 years of history. Java has been criticized for its slow growth and evolution, but Java 10 just shattered that concept. Java 10 is a release with many futuristic changes, the scope and impact of which may not be obvious but are far-fetching. So Java 10 released March 2018 and this is really really cool because one of the most important feature which everybody was looking for is available in this particular feature which is nothing but the local variable type inference. Biggest new feature in Java 10 for developers. It adds type inference to declaration of local variables with initializers and local type inference can be used only in the following scenarios. There is a limitation so this is really cool, at least we have something in our place right now. Limited only to the local variable with initializers, indexes for enhanced for loops and indexes, and local declaration in for loops. So these are some of the features which is already available in C-sharp and it is even beyond what it is available right now in Java, but at least we have this particular feature in Java 10 and this is going to be really, really helpful because the code that we were writing so far, which is looking something like this, as you can see, for every single variable which we require the type to be of this type, for instance, file type is going to be like file dir is equal to new file. Similarly, file writer, file writer is equal to new file writer. So these are some of the things we are specifying the types explicitly is now going to be transformed into something like this. As you can see, we can use the var keyword there and we can specify var dir is equal to new file. Similarly, var lock file is equal to new file. So the new file which is available over here is going to be of type file and this particular variable is going to be of type file as well. Similarly, this is going to be of type file writer and so on and so forth. So this var is going to be a implicit type variable which is available in C sharp earlier and it is currently available in Java. It's really, really cool. So if somebody is from C sharp background, again, don't take me that I'm comparing C sharp suddenly in here. This is the feature which is already available in most of the programming languages and it is currently available in Java. That's really a welcoming news. So let's not wait anymore and start writing the code and understand how things work. So for that, I'm going to flip to IntelliJ IDE. All right, so this is our same project which we have been working so long in our course and we have built our framework to work as much as possible with the latest changes of whatever is coming to the industry and also latest changes in the coding practices as well as the latest changes in Java 10 as well. As we are improving our season 2 of our Udemy course with the latest changes, this change is really really be helpful because we need to change our framework to support the latest version of Java as well. So as I said, I have already installed Java 10 in my machine. It is currently available. I don't really have to show you how to install Java 10 at least because it's pretty straightforward. It's pretty much like how you did all the Java installation. So that's straightforward it is. So I have already installed that. And now, as you can see here, our current framework that we developed for our Udemy course supports Java 8 version. So we did not change our framework to Java 9 because Java 9 is a very, very fastest release. It's just released and it's just gone because Java 10 is right now in here. So we are going to jump directly to Java 10 rather Java 9. So you can see that our code that we have right now, like create log file with the file dir is equal to new file that we saw in the slide. So if I try to use the var keyword here, you'll be getting some sort of errors here. The error is because the var is not understood by the IDE because the current SDK that we have configured is Java 8 as well as the language setting that we have used for our project is actually Java 8. So if we can go here to the file and then if you go to the project structure, 
you can see there is something called as language levels and our framework currently support eight language level so eight is for lambdas type annotations etc so you can see that it also shows a small hints there like what this language is very very focused on and if you click this drop down you can see that for nine version you have models private methods in interfaces and etc whereas 10 you have this local variable type inference so this is what we're actually talking about so if i select this you can see that this particular udemy course is important from maven and any changes made to this configuration may be lost or going to be re-imported after that. So I'm just going to hit apply and I'm going to hit OK. And you can see that the error is gone. Cool. So we are now with the latest version of Java. And also I would like to show what SDK it is currently referring to. If you go to the project structure and go to the dependencies, the SDK is actually 10. So this is Java 10 right now, right? So this is what we are using. And now if I try to build this particular project, you can see that the project is going to be compiling and it's going to work pretty much like how it worked earlier. Well, this error can happen because if we don't really configure our settings in a proper way for the Java compiler. So you can see that the target bytecode version for our Udemy course project is actually 8. So we have to change this to 10 so that it can actually compile to the latest version of changes that we made. So 10 is nothing but JDK 10, right? So I'm just going to select that. I'm going to hit OK by hitting Apply. And now if I try to build this particular project, hopefully this is going to compile and there won't be any compliant, at least for the execution side. So I guess it's all good. There we go. So the compilation is completed successfully within four warnings. That's cool. So this is what is the var keyword. Now we can do a var within our framework and we can make all the changes. That's cool. And that, and this is most welcoming change. And I really, really uh, hope to see that there are so many places that we can use this particular var keyword within our code so that we don't really have to uh, worry about how the things are working. Well, var keyword, you cannot just use something like this. As you can see, if I use the var keyword here, it says it cannot resolve the symbol because you cannot use it as a local variable. That's one of the problem that we saw before, right? So you cannot use within the class instance, uh, you should be using this var within a method, not within uh, a class. So this is not gonna work here. So uh, try to use within the methods here, something like here. So I can do this, right? And uh, this is how the var can be used. Similarly, if I go to the config reader here, so I can just use the var here. And similarly, for the properties, I can just use the var here. For the input stream, I can use the var. So we can keep on modifying our framework to adapt the latest changes of the configurations here. Right? So that's it, guys. This word is the latest change with the var keyword. So we are going to make the whole framework to use the latest version of the var keyword changes. And I'm going to upload the same source code within our Udemy course. So once again, thank you very much for watching this video and have a great day.